The flourishing church matures through prayer. Epiphras was a co-worker with the Apostle Paul. As we said, a native of Colossae. He preached the gospel to the city and to Laodicea and to Hierapolis. And he kept Paul updated about what was happening. And he was in prison with Paul at the time the letter to Philemon was written. And so in addition to being the founding member of their church and the one who had initially preached the gospel to them, the one who had taught them and pastored them, Epaphras prayed for his brothers and sisters at Colossae. He prayed that they might grow deeper in their faith. This is one of our commitments as a church, that we are a people who are committed to prayer in faith. We believe that God accomplishes his will through our prayers. And we've seen God do amazing things through the prayers of his people. I got a text earlier this week from a friend who said to me, out of the blue, hey John, I wanted to let you know that eight years ago today, my wife and I prayed for Thomas as the new campus pastor in Erie. Five years ago today, we prayed for your wife, Lindsay, and her work at Medtronic. And two years ago today, we prayed for Greg, who was retiring. This couple keeps a prayer journal they have for 20 years. They're able to go back every day and see who they prayed for eight years ago, five years ago, two years ago. And then to celebrate together the work that God has done in the lives of those people. How amazing and intentional is that? Like we need more of that. More commitment to, as we saw earlier, continuing steadfastly in prayer, faithfully, lifting up the needs that exist here amongst us, praying for each other, and then seeing what God does. I love that Paul says about Epaphras, that he prays that they may stand mature and fully assured in all the will of God. That's what he's praying for. That his brothers and sisters would grow in their knowledge of Jesus. That they would grow in maturity. That they would be able to stand through the trials that they face. Prayer has been a critical part of the history of our church. We've been in Boulder for 135 years this year. Just imagine for a moment the numbers of prayers that have been spoken in 135 years. That's amazing. 50 years ago, a group of men decided they needed to pray here at the church because at that time, our church was located at Broadway and Balsam. And there was a growing sense that we were outgrowing that space and we might need to move to a new location to accommodate future growth here in our city. So that group of men began to pray. And then there was some property out on the prairie in, on Calmia Avenue that became available. And they said, boy, that's pretty far out of town. I wonder if we should go there. And they asked the Lord to guide them. And the church decided to buy this property and then to build this building with a group of volunteers. And they kept praying, and they didn't stop even after the building was built. And in fact, they've continued to meet weekly for the last 50 years. Praying for our church, week in and week out. For your prayer requests that you submit on the blue card in front of you, for our needs, for our church to grow in maturity, for our elders and pastors and staff. There's so much that has happened at our church in the last 50 years. And I can say without a doubt in my mind that anything good that has happened in the last 50 years is because of men like Doug Palmer and Del Elliott and Pat Patrick and Bob Johnson, and Corky Shields, and others who have gathered together faithfully for 50 years 
to pray for you and to pray for God to be at work amongst us. Prayer is the catalyst for spiritual growth in the church. And I'm so thankful for so many of you who labor in prayer for our church. It matters. It makes a difference. This might be a way for some of you to make an eternal impact in the life of what happens here and in the life of another. To commit to be in prayer for someone. To write it down. See what God does. Follow up with them. Ask God to help. And if you need prayer today, I would encourage you to grab that blue card, fill it out, let us know, drop it in the boxes in the lobbies as you leave. The pastors and elders and faithful men will pray for you this week. The flourishing church matures through prayer.